What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you something super exciting building on the Onyx slash Tensor RT video that I did yesterday or whenever it was, where in video I'm talking about working with DirectML at Olive Models to accelerate stable diffusion inference and generating images. There was this thread here talking about it pretty much doubling stable diffusion performance. Scrolling down, there's me commenting where Vlad Mantic basically said they wouldn't really be supporting Onyx, but rather they'd much rather support Tensor RT directly. And scrolling down further from three days ago to yesterday, an official announcement from Automatic 11.11 saying, in the meanwhile, while NVIDIA works and everything, basically NVIDIA are working on releasing a web UI modification with Tensor RT and DirectML support built in. They say they can't release it yet because of approval issues. Meanwhile, I made an extension to make and use Tensor Serazi engines for UNET, linked here. My performance gains for 512 pictures is about 50 to 100% faster, which is insane. Compared to SDP no mem optimization, on large resolutions, gains are smaller. After NVIDIA releases their version, I would probably integrate the differences to make the performance better. This is with the Automatic 11 repo. And according to the doc they have shown, them, Tensor RT was three times as fast as Xformers, an optional optimization for Stable Diffusion Web UI. The Tensor RT support in the extension is unrelated to Microsoft Olive, but it should give you a pretty good performance boost, but it's a little bit involved, but we'll get there in just a moment. The idea of having double the performance in Stable Diffusion with an official plugin is actually amazing. So clicking this link, you'll find a brand new extension for the Web UI Tensor RT support for Web UI adds the ability to convert a loaded model's unit module into Tensor RT, requires version least after Comet 33, etc. Currently, it's the dev branch after 2023.05.27. So your Automatic 11 repo needs to be up to date, and it's only been tested on Windows. Lowers are baked into the converted model. Hyper network support is not tested. Control net is not supported. Textual inversions work normally. NVIDIA is also working on releasing their version of Tensor RT for web UI, which might be more performant, but they can't release it yet. There seems to be support for quickly replacing weight of Tensor RT engine without rebuilding it, and this extension does not offer that option yet. So essentially, we can convert models and we should get roughly double the performance out of them, and that's great. So how do we install it? Well, after installing the Automatic 11.11 Stable Diffusion Web UI, for which you'll find a link in the description down below, if you don't already have it set up, there's also a one-line install command. You'll need to install the extension manually, and you'll need to download a zip with Tensor RT from NVIDIA linked here. You'll also find this down below. Then we need to choose the same version of CUDA as the PyTorch library we're currently using, such as Torch 201, it's CUDA 11.8. Extract the zip into the extension directly so that Tensor RT, similarly named, exists in the same place as the script directory and etc. Let's go ahead and do this. So first of all, we need to download Tensor RT from NVIDIA. When you head across to this link, you'll need to sign up with an NVIDIA developer account. Don't worry, you can create an account very easily just by punching in your email and a password. Otherwise, put in your email and password to log in. All right, there we go. We need to agree to the terms and now we can download Tensor RT him. So Torch 2.0.1, it's CUDA 11.8. 8.6, this one here. Now there's a ton of downloads. So you can see there's tons of CUDA supported. We're looking for Windows 10, there we go. Now, when we're on this most up-to-date branch, we should be using Torch 2.0.1, CUDA 11.8. So we can download the same version mentioned there. So CUDA 11.8, this long name up here, that's the zip package we'll be downloading rather than CUDA 12. All right, so after a 1.2 gig download, Tensor RT is done downloading. Now we just need to install the extension normally. So we'll go ahead and copy the URL, open up Stable Diffusion Web UI using however you normally launch it. All right, there we go. It's started up. So we'll head to the extensions tab, then available and load from. I don't think it'll be on this list just yet. So Stable Diffusion Web UI Tensor RT. No, we'll go to install from URL instead. Paste the link for the Git repository here. Leave everything else as is and click install. Now it should go ahead and download this latest extension and place it in our folder here. And now all we need to do is restart Stable Diffusion. So I'll close the console to close Stable Diffusion Web UI. And now we can 
go ahead and extract the zip we downloaded from NVIDIA so that the folder name exists in the same place as the script directory and trtpath.py. Now, this is actually trtpaths with an S dot pi, but you can see it's in Stable Diffusion Web UI, wherever you have it installed, followed by extensions and Stable Diffusion Web UI Tensor RT. And here's the scripts folder. So we need to extract it so that Tensor RT exists in the same place as the scripts and TRT path. So here is my download. I'll open it with 7-zip or whatever you choose to use. And we have the Tensor RT folder. We'll go ahead and extract this to the extension folder here, just like that. And now that it's done, we should be able to close our downloads, make sure there's files inside of this folder and it's not a folder in a folder. Now, just a quick note, you don't need to install CUDA separately. How to use will get here. Now the update may take some time to run and using something like everything, you can see files are updating here with lots of Onyx files, etc. Anyways, when it's done, it should start up. Cannot import STUnet from modules. So we need to swap to the developer branch so we can type in git checkout dev, then run user.bat. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll close our terminal and once again, open up either CMD or PowerShell, PWSH, and we'll run git checkout dev dev. And as long as you see switched, it should have switched to the latest branch. Now we can go ahead and launch it up as usual. We should now see a brand new tab such as Tensor RT up here. There we go. Now we can convert models to Onyx. And after that, we can convert Onyx models to Tensor RT. Awesome. Also converting to Onyx will fail if you've already used convert from Onyx to Tensor RT at any point prior to conversion. So you might have to restart the web UI completely before the conversion. Okay, just a few quick notes. If you're gonna use lawyers and hyper networks, you need to select the model and the lawyers and hyper networks for them to be baked into your new model. So for example, I'll select realistic vision and in the settings tab, we should be able to select under extra networks, I think, our hyper networks here and Lycoris or LoRa. I think only LoRa and hyper networks will be supported here. Anyways, when you have them selected, simply apply settings at the very top, head to Tensor RT, and now we can go ahead and convert. So we need to enter a file name for output, leave empty to use the same name as the model we're currently using, and it'll place it in models, unit Onyx directory, so I'll leave it as is, and click convert unit to onyx now checking your console it should go ahead and convert everything for some reason i'm getting an issue here maybe just base 1.5 i do know that stable diffusion 2 models won't work with this no same issue i so i can see the virtual environment site packages torch and i think I think the reason is because we have lots of extensions. So let's instead run it again. And this time we'll just turn off all the extensions that we're not using. I did see something about the Hyper Networks patch. So I'll take a screenshot for quick remembering and we'll get to disabling everything we're not gonna be using here, at least while we're generating these. So everything but the built-in and the Tensor RT plugin, apply and restart. And just for good luck, I'll be closing and reopening the entire Stable Diffusion web UI. And now let's see if we're more lucky. So Tensor RT, convert. There we go, it's now converting. All you need to do is just sit around and wait and applying optimization. I think that's it, seems about right. So time taken, cool. Now that we have it, we can convert Onyx to Tensor RT, Onyx file name, I'm not too sure. So we'll head to the install folder, then models, followed by unit, unit Onyx, there we go. V1.5 pruned Onyx, we'll paste that in here. Output file name, we'll leave the same. Minimum width, maximum width. You need to set these based on what you're gonna be generating with this model, as this will be baked into the model full stop. You won't be able to generate bigger or smaller than this in the future when using this new optimized model, at least for now. And of course, minimum slash maximum batch size. You can crank this as well as you like. Maximum prompt token count, I'll leave it at maybe 300. Extra arguments, that's all cool. And we'll convert Onyx to Tensor RT. Is it the name, perhaps? Let's call it 1.5 pruned. Are you happy now? Models unit Onyx file name. Ah, there we go, that worked. Okay, so models unit Onyx 15 pruned or whatever you call the model or see the model as, and now you should be converting it. So you can check your console here to find out exactly what's going on. And hopefully good things happen here. I'm using a 3080 Ti, so I do have 12 gigs of VRAM. I've heard of this peaking around 17, so I'm not entirely sure if this will succeed. We will have to find out. 
This, of course, could take some time. If we have a look here, we go to TensorRT, convert to Onyx. This will take a short while and convert Onyx to TensorRT. This takes very long, from 15 minutes to an hour. That's quite a bit of time. This takes up a lot of VRAM, so we press the show command for conversion and run the command ourselves after shutting down the web UI. So let's actually do that just to make sure it has the best chance of working. I'll show the command instead. I need to close it and restart it first. Show command. There we go. Hitting control C, cancel the current conversion. And this is what we're doing here. So we'll need to run these two commands first. So I'll put them into notepad here. These we only ever need to run once to set these different paths. And this is the conversion command here. So I'll paste this in too. And we can close Stable Diffusion Web UI completely as such or close the window. There we go. Now let's try run this command once more. So now we'll open up a new command prompt. We'll copy paste in the first two commands as such. And now we'll run the third command here. Hit enter and wait for this to finish. This is going to take quite a bit of time and use quite a bit of VRAM as well. Maybe let's just use the web UI and hope that it works. Failed to create engine from model or file. Anyways, we'll try once more. And I think this time, let's just leave it running. It at least seemed to load in the web UI here. Yeah, definitely things are happening. So we'll see. And hey, hey, there we go. It worked. It only took a small 11 minutes and 9 seconds on a 3080 Ti. So essentially, it sat at here for about 10 minutes until it suddenly said detected three inputs and whoop, there's the rest of the text. Everything's being outputted and at this folder here is our output file. So navigating there, it should be, there we go. Cool. Now, how do we use this? Well, after the conversion, we'll find a TRT file in the settings of Stable Diffusion. Use SD unit option to select a newly generated TensorRT model and generate pictures. OK, so settings, clicking show all pages puts every option on one big page. Control F to search SD unit, choose unit model automatic equals use one with same file name as checkpoint. None equals use unit from checkpoint. OK, so we'll leave it at automatic with automatic. It should look for a unit file with the same name name as the checkpoint we're currently using. So we'll leave it as is and we'll generate an image with the base model. So I'll say a spaceman on the moon. We'll leave it on ULA, everything default, generate. Now checking here, we're getting around 11 iterations a second. Let's crank it up to maybe four images to get a good speed benchmark. So there we go. We're at around 12, 13 iterations a second. OK, let's go ahead and rename our weirdly named file here. Turns out we didn't need to rename it and we'll call it V1 hyphen five hyphen pruned should be fine to keep the same name as the model we currently have selected a refresh. In fact, just to be safe, we'll change away and change back. Looking in the console, it loaded the weights from the safe tenses file. I assume it's done something with the unit. Maybe let's see if we see a difference in performance. OK, let's restart it. I think I probably confused it with my renaming and let's see if that fixes it. OK, so now we're back here. Let's generate and TensorRT was linked. There we go. We're now at 17, 18, 20 iterations a second, which is almost double the speed. That is incredible. Here are our image outputs. Now, obviously, I could crank the width and height, but only if I converted it with them baked in here. So I'm stuck with 512 by 512 and a max batch size of two, I think. Anyways, now that we've converted it, we're getting a lot more speed, though, as far as I understand, let's go ahead and enable these extensions I disabled. I had one of these off. It was this one. Apply and restart. Let's see if we can get the same result with all of our things enabled again. Let's have a look. 20 iterations a second. Cool. We still have a huge speed boost. Now let's try adding a Laura. So for example, I have a Pepe Frog Laura and let's see what we can do with it. Looking at our console once more, still at 20 iterations a second, but the Laura is not working at all. I'll set it to five. This should completely break the kind of image we get. And I mean, they're more cartoony, but I don't think it's loading the Laura at all. As they said, it's only textual inversions that work properly. So I'll go ahead and download a textual inversion to use. It doesn't really look like it. That one does. And let's see if we can get this to work. So add it in and generate. Now we should hopefully see Mr. Ramsey poking his face out. Maybe this. Oh, there we go. He's definitely there. He's not on the moon, but it's 
definitely him. And looking at our output here, still getting 20 iterations a second. So currently this technology is very early, but it is seriously fast. So if you're someone who's not using embeddings, lowers, etc., then this is perfect. You can now speed up a model and get double the performance as long as you generate within these same image parameters that you usually do, such as size, batch count, etc., and you'll notice a huge performance increase. In fact, close to 100% increase. But it does still have quite a bit to go. Of course, it is a developing topic, and it'll only speed up graphics cards with RT tensor cores in them, such as the RTX 20, 30, or 40 series. And of course, we'll see the huge increase when NVIDIA decides to release what they've been working on. And of course, it gets integrated officially into Auto 11.11 without the need for extensions, etc. Anyways, this has been a long and involved video. You'll find the links in the description down below once more. Thank you all for watching. My name is Pete Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!